Hey guys, Mechanic CG here, and welcome back to another episode of Forza Motorsport 3. Today is episode number 169. Nice. If you want to help support the channel, then leave a like, comment down below, and subscribe, and feel free to check out the other videos in the Forza Mega Series. Now let's get into the content. This episode was streamed live on YouTube. If you want to make sure to catch the streams, then be sure to subscribe and hit that notification bell. Alright, what is that? We are now going to take part in the Endurance 160 kilometers of Silverstone. I'm going to be taking this Nissan GTR R32 because I want to drive an R32 today. And I haven't driven this car yet in this game, so I have to buy a new car. This is a new car I've chosen. Let's get going. Anyways. Oh, uh, it, I've unmuted the capture card, but I haven't unmuted it in my ears, so I can't hear the car. There we go. Oh, that's a good one. His racing association should partner with different developers to test what the public enjoy more. Make even more money on their racing games. I think it'd be a great idea. Us gamers, we come up with brilliant ideas that we'd love to see. That we would enjoy. But the problem is, and I say this multiple, multiple times. Once you get involved in business... What makes sense will never work. Common sense doesn't exist in the business world, unfortunately. Even when that common sense, realistically, would benefit them. For example, Nintendo, right? Rather than hiring lawyers to get people to sue companies like Dolphin, right? And sue all these websites that are hosting their old games... Why not, instead of spending that money on the lawyer team to take it all down, spend the money on, I don't know, fund the Dolphin team to work with you to make compatible versions of games for the Switch that you can then sell and make money off it. Oh my gosh. Do you know what? That sounds like a... a but they'll never do it. Because unfortunately, businesses are fucking stupid nowadays. They're, they're stupid. Like, it, it, it would be the greatest idea in the world. But the problem is, Nintendo would much rather do that. It doesn't even make the money by sending Dolphin a cease and desist and whatnot. They could quite easily go, do you know what, Dolphin, work with us, right? We'll pay you and your developers, I don't know, 250 grand a year, right? If you can make us four, maybe five games a year from what the community wants, right? We will sell them. We'll take all the profit from it because we've already pay paid you a wage. We'll take all the profit from it. All they've got to do is sell, I don't know, 50,000 copies at $50 each. They made their money back. 50,000 copies is not a lot in the gaming world nowadays. You can quite easily get a game to hit 500,000, even a million. Just one game. That would require... Oof. Obviously, that's not how the numbers would work in the long run, but still, that kind of thing, especially with the fact that Nintendo property is all owned by Nintendo. A lot of the stuff in these Nintendo games... Cheers for the resubscribing, Kodo. Like, that did a lot. <laughs> um, but yeah, the, the, obviously, having... Um, <laughs> why did he unsubscribe to resubscribe? Just to have his name pop up on screen. Oh, look, it's me on the screen! <laughs> Thank you, anyways, for resubscribing, Connor. Appreciate it. But yeah, like, Nintendo's intellectual property is all owned by Nintendo. You look at Forza Motorsport 3, right? Everything in this game is licensed. It's got licensed music that they'd have to repurchase. They've got all the cars that they have to repurchase. Oh. Oh, is that a new account? Oh, so you've made a new account. Okay, that, again, that achieved a lot. Appreciate it, though. Um, but yeah, 
in I could understand if Microsoft was like, well, it, we realistically can't remaster Forza Motorsport 3. And it makes sense, because you've got all these licenses, you just can't do it. But what you can do, if you own all the property in a video game already, for example, Mario, all the music, all the soundtrack, all the voices are all owned by Nintendo. What's stopping Nintendo using their own property to make another game? Absolutely nothing. But unfortunately, these companies are just dumb. They're stupid. And that's the same story with um, companies like even Formula One, right? Although F1 23 was a really enjoyable game, and I thoroughly enjoyed F1 23, the problem with F1 is the last Formula One game that I actually enjoyed was F1 2017. You think, so there's been 2018, 2019, 2020, 2021, and 2022. Fifth, five games, right, that have been shit, that I haven't enjoyed from Codemasters. Which means for five years, Codemasters, in my mind, has hogged the license for a mediocre game. Now, I understand other people have different opinions and whatnot, but... Even if someone has a different opinion on whether they think, oh, F122 was actually quite good or terrible, it still doesn't take away from my point that I'm making where I say, why not let another company have a chance at it as well? Let two companies do it. Make F123 for... I, again, it, it makes it difficult for the two competing companies that own the license then. But the problem is, if I want to play F1, even if it was the fact that F1 as a career mode could only exist in F1 23, or the Codemasters Formula 1 games, but then Formula 1 cars could be featured in other games, that is still a, a good alternative for me, and that's what I think should feature in Motorsport. Okay, yeah, there might not be a... There shouldn't be a series. If, say, for example... Motorsport Games, which I believe owns the IndyCar license now, if they make the IndyCar game with a story, fair enough. But at least let Forza have some of the IndyCars to then put in their game and have like a small championship in Forza. I mean, how Forza does thing is. Yeah, if, if they made a DLC, 100% paid for it, but... Cardo, I don't get how you can sit down and eat that many Doritos. My stomach can't do it anymore. My... I don't know what's wrong with my... I keep drinking. But I'm not a fan of eating food as much anymore. Like, I just want to drink and drink. But I don't want to eat. Hence why I could quite easily go through three, four, five things to sneak, which you're only supposed to go through two. I could quite easily go through three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. Maybe not ten. Maybe not nine. But you get my point. I drink a fuck ton of whatever there is. Yeah, Most World 6 had NASCAR DLC, but do you want to know when Most World 6 came out? If I'm not mistaken, why, why, Cardo? If you're just making YouTube accounts, stop it. Because. <laughs> All doing a, a fake YouTube account does is it damages YouTube channels. So you might think, oh, look, it's doing. You're actually damaging my YouTube channel by doing that. <laughs> so. Because it's classed as fake engagement. And you get penalized for under the fake engagement and whatnot. 
And it doesn't matter if it's alt accounts or whatnot, it's still classed as fake engagement. Hence why you can still, you know, get punished for it, pretty much. So, uh, don't, or you'll get banned. Because, uh, by the way, with the way that YouTube bans works is I can ban you, and it can ban your other accounts as well. So. Consider yourself warned. <laughs> but yeah, um, again, going back to Motorsport 6, um, with the DLC, when Motorsport 6 came out, if I'm not mistaken, NASCAR Heat 1 was in development. Is that a threat, Cotto? I'll, I'll challenge you. Yeah, I, th I think NASCAR Heat 1 was in development when... Um, what's it called? When it came out. Because if I'm not mistaken, Heat 1 was 2017 and then 20... Yeah, so Heat 1 would have come out in 2016. Motorsport 1 was in 2015. Yeah, I did. I timed you out. Which is a temporary ban. The difference is, YouTube doesn't have a timeout feature, I don't believe. Oh, put user in timeout. Oh, I could, I could totally do it. Let's do it. Bye bye. You're in timeout, good sir. <laughs> um, I don't know how long the timeout is or how to untime out, so you might just have to wait. <laughs> <laughs> oh well. He said I wouldn't do it. I proved him wrong. <laughs> he just he just sent me a message on WhatsApp saying hunt. <laughs> That's amazing. Cardo, send me a message on WhatsApp. Let me know how long you've got timed out for. See what it says. If, if it's any more than an hour, then I'll fix it after this race. Otherwise, you're just going to have to wait till the end of the race now. <laughs> oh, that's funny. It's 45 minutes. <laughs> wow. Oh, sorry, Cardo. <laughs> well, at least I know that when I put someone in a timeout, they'll have a timeout. That was the one thing with Twitch. You used to press, oh, put user in timeout, and it would give them, like, two minutes and then ten minutes. And it's like, well, no, I want them to shut up now. I don't want them to come back for an hour. I want to put them on the naughty step for an hour. Let them sit there, think about what they've done. If they come back, <laughs> Kodo's chat is now reserved to WhatsApp. Lovely. But yeah, let's let's go back. I, I, the problem is, um, one of the things that I'm very concerned about when it comes to the new Falls of Motorsport um, is the fact I don't believe there'll be an IndyCar DLC or an F1 or a NASCAR DLC. I think they'll just be, you know, added as limited time things. I feel like the new motorsport is going to be very much um, live service based. Similar to how games like Fortnite do it, where they bring out exclusive content for a short period of time and then it's gone. And the problem that I find with a video game is if that content is brought out and then gone, well, I've missed it. That's why I'm very much not a fan of the live service model that a lot of video games are getting. 
Add a bunch of off-road cars with no dirt tracks. That would be a great move for Forza, though, to make now, is to start adding dirt tracks. Now, with this motorsport refresh... <laughs> God, I remember you're in timeout. You you better behave yourself, because uh, if you don't, you will get put back in the naughty step. I'm gonna rewind this one because that was dreadful. Um, but yeah, I think now is their opportunity to actually make dirt tracks and put dirt cars with it. Now is their opportunity to prove that they are sports of motorsport and not just. Forza Road Racing. <laughs> By the way, chat, in, ca in case you're wondering, uh, Kodo's asking for another timeout at the moment. He may be getting another one before the end of the stream. <laughs> um, what was I going to say? Bing, bing, bing. Bing, 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 bing. Yeah, I very much would would enjoy uh, Forza, but I'm I, I am concerned about the live service looking model that they've actually demonstrated so far. I don't like I don't like the idea of them adding content. Here's, here's the thing, if it's paid for content, it's fine in my eyes, because I can pay for the content if I want it, if I don't want it, I don't have to pay for it, but if I pay for it, I get the content, I get what I'm paying for. If they add it as free service, there's only a certain, A, they don't profit from it, which makes no sense as, from a business stand, standpoint, and B, I miss out as a consumer. That's why I don't get when they add cars to the Forza Dom playlist. It's like, well, you've added this car for free that you could have added to a car pack that you could have sold for £3, for example, which would have quite easily gotten a lot of people buying it. And that content would be there forever. Oh, it's back. Oh, you're back. So the timeout is about five minutes. Lovely. You're welcome. Now behave yourself, young man. <laughs> I sound old when I say that. Fuck's sake. But yeah, I'm, I'm really not a fan of live service models. And I know some people, um, people that, like, pay for Game Pass and whatnot, um, I've, some people don't like paying for video games anymore. Like, they're, uh, they expect this because of Game Pass and a lot of free-to-play games. They just expect games to be there to offer stuff for free and whatnot. And while I'm all for free-to-play games, I think free-to-play games should be for free-to-play. That model of offering that live service should be for games that are free and people pay for extra content or do missions to unlock free content that should be exclusive to free to play games if you're paying 60 quid for a game i don't want that free to play model i want a normal game that i have access to all of the content in it if there's even a shred of content i can't access unless i've done a limited time event that's that's a fucking terrible move absolutely terrible and I really do not like it like look at look at this right now I'm playing Forza Motorsport 3 am I being restricted by limited time stuff no I'm not yeah the servers don't exist but I'm not being restricted by a limited time model whereas if you go to say for example 45 pound a month yeah, if you subscribe to the Ruby tier for six months, you get a free hoodie. I'll send you a free hoodie to your house. 
Um, no, but the thing is that that free-to-play model makes sense on free-to-play games, but a lot of developers are like adding it to other stuff, and it just doesn't it it doesn't work, unfortunately, and it ruins the gaming experience. You look at like Forza Motorsport, Forza Horizon 5, for example, right? Or even I, I'll give Horizon 4 as a great example. I'm replaying through Horizon 4, right? A lot of the cars that I enjoyed driving in Horizon 4 that I unlocked in the festival playlist, I don't have anymore. Because I rebought it on Steam and the save isn't there. If my save corrupts on Xbox, I'll lose all my cars. And I can't get those back unless I grind my ass off to get those festival playlist points, which again, what's the point? It makes it so pointless actually bothering playing those games if they remove it. Like, we'll get your address, Doc. She then send the SWAT team to your house. Yes, I'll, I'll totally do that. No, I won't. You know, it's a criminal offence to SWAT someone, right? If you do f false, like, I don't know. False reports for a SWAT team. You, you, you it's a criminal offence. It's a criminal offence in the UK, definitely. I don't know about America because a lot of the time it's anonymous and American police can't be bothered. But it, it's a criminal offence in the UK to do that. I would get in trouble. Big trouble. I mean, I don't, but. Sure. Whatever you say. Shut up my last one. Bang around. What did you join to? A an active chat. I know. It's so exciting. <laughs> it's brilliant. But anyways, welcome everyone who is joining the chat. I see we got some people uh, watching the stream that aren't typing in the chat. See nothing, nothing wrong with that. I want to say welcome to you guys as well. Um, even though I won't know who you are, I won't be able to address you directly. I still welcome you as well. Appreciate you being here. Just talk about crimes and illegal stuff. Oh yeah, swatting someone. It's illegal to do that. If you swat someone, like the typical streamer swatting, that's illegal to do. You can get in big trouble. Wow. Kodo, why are you trying to fret? That, that is, is that libel? I can get you done now, Kodo. <laughs> Kodo is on thin ice already. He's already had a timeout. Now I can sue him and get money from him. <laughs> Uh-oh, Kodo, you better lawyer up. <laughs> And you, Aaron, because you've just made a libel as well. Oh, uh, have you seen that clip of um, Piers Morgan where he's arguing with this... I think it's a Just Stop Oil protester or something. And he just turns around with this most outrageous statement. And Piers is like, well, now what you've done there is libel, so I, I'll give you this chance to apologise. And the guy turns around and says... I'm not apologising for nothing. And then Piers goes and says, um, Ah, oh, right, well, you better get your lawyers sorted out because I'm going to be suing you for that. And the guy, prop his face just drops. It's funny. <laughs> Stealing money from people. Tell me something new. Oh, it's great. There's some uh, very, very interesting clips that you find on TikTok. Be yeah, well, welcome everyone. Hopefully, everyone's having a great day today. By the way, if you are new here, feel free to drop a sub, drop a like, 
Uh, it really does help with the YouTube algorithm. And those are free as well. They don't cost a penny to help out. Oh, that, that reminds me. I haven't actually set up my uh, bot yet for YouTube. I haven't got that set up. So I will add that to my list to do it. They did laugh about it. Uh, that was quite funny, to be fair. I'm not going to live it down. I, I said, we're all going to forget about it, and then someone's going to bring it up in six months' time, and it's going to happen over again. Free money is always good money. 100%. If you get money that's free, and you didn't do anything for it, there probably should be some question marks going off, but... Aaron, you know what happened. You were here. What do you mean, what happened? You know exactly what happened. Oh, nothing happened six months ago. <laughs> what do you mean, what happened six months ago? Aaron, are you not listening to the conversation? Are you talking about the point where I said at work they're going to say in six months time? You remember what happened six months ago? <laughs> might, might want to listen to the whole conversation and it might make a little bit of sense to you. <laughs> yeah, if we, if we can move on to a different topic, greatly appreciate it. I recently always steal in people's money. Do you know, that's the... That was terrible. Uh, that's the one thing that bugs me about iRacing, is the fact that you pay a subscription, and then on top of that, they charge you money. And if you stop paying the subscription, they don't refund you for all the stuff that you now no longer have access to. They just say tough shit. It's such a scummy business model, and I hate it. But people suck up to that. They're like, oh, but it's iRacing. Like, uh, hello? Imagine if I said, oh, you need to subscribe and pay me money to see all my videos. But then on top of that, you've got to pay for every video that you want to watch. But then if you stop subscribing, you lose access to all those videos. Yeah, you'd be fucking pissed off, wouldn't you? Well, that's what iRacing is doing. <laughs> But pe people pay for it, so... And the problem is, iRacing, there are other options to iRacing, so it doesn't bother me. iRacing is pretty good, though. Don't get me wrong. iRacing is very good. No, imagine if you paid £6 a month for Netflix, and then they turned around and said, By the way, for every show you want to watch, you also have to pay us £2 for Again, you'd be annoyed. You wouldn't bother with it. But for some reason, because it's iRacing, and it has the brand iRacing on it, it's fine. That's the only reason why iRacing is so expensive. Because they know they can sit there and justify charging you that ridiculous price tag. By the way, I think I may have to pit for this race. I don't see my fuel lasting the whole 31 laps. So this may be the first race that I actually have to pit. a fan of this song and I don't know why it's on this playlist because I don't remember adding it. Oh, I'm not a fan of that. 
Though it might not, it might not be the chorus that. Maybe it was the drop, like the, what is it, the bridge, that got me. Because there is a couple of songs that the bridges are so good that I'm like fucking at it. So this might be one of those songs. Oh shit. At least when I'm on the dirt, I've got four-wheel drive, so... I am looking at actually getting a, a racing seat, but I don't know. Well, it has no bridge, so it can't have been the bridge. I don't get why I've added this then. Well, yeah, I know the name is Voices in My Head. It says on the screen. Voices in My Head, Fallen in Reverse. It says right next to me what the song's called. So that's why people don't need to ask me, oh, what's this song called? This is why I added it. Oh, this is good. Yeah, now I now I get why I added it. <laughs> I know exactly why I added the song now. <laughs> as soon as that kicked in, I was like, yep, that's why. <laughs> No, because you are lazy fuck. What? No. Because A, I don't have the song title loaded at every time. I don't have title open. It's in the background. And B, again, the song will always be there for you. Like, the title will always be there. You don't have to go and ask and then it's like, oh, well, I've missed the song now. I'm sorry, I don't know what it is. It's always there. You can literally see, oh, I like this song. Ah, it's called such and such. I don't know. Genius. Big brain straps. This is Biffy Clyro. You're going to find out in a minute. It's Bubbles by Biffy Clyro. I can't remember the song name. <laughs> Trying to make that bang. I, do you know what? Uh, I was saying at work. If I can get this to pay off. Or like be able to stream full time. I'd be more, more than happy. To stream full time. The thing is, I wouldn't even need to stream full time, to be honest. Like, I could quite easily, if I can do some hours at work, something different, do some hours streaming, and then some hours editing. What do you mean, what the fuck is that kind of name? What, Bubbles? For a song? It is a weird song name. You are created on the bubbles at night. I chase them around and try to pop them all the time. We don't need to trust a single word they say. It's a tune. I've just noticed that this, that CLK in front has the exact same rear lights as the SLR. What do you mean, is that your nickname? Bubbles. No, it's the fucking song name! Aaron's having a small brain moment. Second place. Oh, do you know what? It would be a very big push. But I... No, I don't think I will. I think I'll still need to pit. The funny thing is, I've been fuel saving this entire time. Shifting early to make sure that the fuel lasts a little bit longer. It's still not working. I don't think I'm going to make it. around and try to pop them all the time by the way after we're done with these endurance races we're going to be on the world championships once these endurance races are done that's pretty much it the world championships is the final stretch 
and we'll be going from F class all the way up to R1 in the what by the way the R1 world championship is fucking huge 13 races yeah it's it's a big one Such a nice sounding engine. Ooh, that sounds sick actually. Do you know, I'm gonna go for story time. Uh, I once got picked up from a McDonald's when I finished a shift at work, when I was working at McDonald's. I got picked up from a shift in an Aston Martin DB11. I was a very excited man. Uh, this, this would have been probably about four or five years ago now at this point. Um, maybe a little less. Four years ago. Three years ago. Four years ago. I would say four years ago. And I got to ride in an Aston Martin. DB11. Why do, why would a, what do you mean a cop car? Oh yeah, the Rosas has turned up. Oh look, it's the Rosas. They got to arrest me for nothing. Tantrum Desire, by the way, is fucking What do you mean that's what I was... No, I wasn't talking about that. I was talking about going in a DB11. You made up the cop cars. You made up something about a cop car. Not me. <laughs> you just brought up cop cars for no reason. You plonker. But yeah, I'm, uh, hopefully, I can see about, I don't know. We'll see what happens with the next six months of streaming. Hopefully it picks up see what happens. We can only hope that something good comes out of it. No, it literally says 992 GC3 cup car. Don't see many Aston Martins in the US. Are they common in the UK? They're very common. So, obviously Aston Martin is a British company. I, th I think they're made by Germans now, to be honest. Uh, I don't think they've got British bone in their body anymore. However, they are, by technicality, oh, they are a British company. They have British heritage. Therefore, a lot of the time, they're very popular with British people. Um, Aaron, you are a plonker. <laughs> um, but yeah, pretty much... It's the same with Jaguar as well. Um, they're not very popular anywhere else because they are a British car, even, even though, again, they're not a very British company anyway. If, if I'm not mistaken, I'm pretty sure Jaguar Land Rover, 
Because obviously Jaguar and Land Rover sort of combined into one company. Uh, and then I believe they got bought out by a Chinese car firm. Like a Chinese car company. If I'm not... Again, I'm, it could be completely miles off. Obviously, Lamborghini is now owned by Audi. But then Audi got bought out by Volkswagen. So Volkswagen owns Lamborghini. Yet... They don't share the part. It's really complicated. Volkswagen's umbrella of cars is unbelievable. It's so strange. There's so many different things that they have. You know. Yeah, I, I got driven home in an Aston Martin. Safe to say that's the coolest Uber ride I've ever had. It wasn't an Uber, but, you know. No Uber ride I ever ha will have is. Yeah. VW owns a lot of companies. Bugatti owns Rimac now. Um, but they've sort of concatenated into a its own company. So they've become Bugatti Rimac. Um, if I'm not mistaken, the boss of Bugatti now is... Oh no, I, I probably will ban you then. <laughs> so don't say it. If you think I'll ban you for something that you're going to say, then I probably will ban you. Let's be real. Um, yeah, Rim Rimac is now... Nice one, Cotto. You definitely need to be careful how much Doritos you're buying. Um, yeah, what was I saying? Yeah, Rimac is basically going to be the electric supercar division of sort of VW. Like, hypercar, their ultimate luxury. Obviously, Lamborghini is more supercars, so that's sort of that side of VW. And then Bugatti's going to be the hypercar, hybrid car. Because now that Rimac is part of it, Rimac's going to supply, like, electric motors and whatnot for Bugatti's. And then Bugatti's is going to be, like, a hybrid or something. Something about cars. Oh, so you're going to shit on a car, right? And I'm going to ban you because you're delusional and you'll make a delusional take. I see. Well, this is down to your risk. So, it's up to you. Are you gonna try and shit on one of my favorite cars and I'll ban? No, I'm joking. <laughs> probably not that bad. I'll, I'll probably just time you out along with Kodo. But yeah, v VW owns a large portion of... I, I'm very surprised... So you know how Xbox is getting in trouble at the moment for... Um, it's a skyline, it's dog shit. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> I, I will agree with that. The Skyline's just such an overrated car. But... It's a good car, but it doesn't deserve the hype that it gets. There are a lot of other cars that deserve more hype than this. But yeah, with this uh, Xbox and Activision acquisition thing, Xbox is obviously getting in trouble. They're trying to block it because apparently Xbox will have a monopoly and whatnot. How the hell does Volkswagen not have a monopoly on... Um, what's it called? The car industry. Volkswagen has a huge monopoly on the car industry, but because they sell their cars with different badges on them, it's fine, apparently. Like, that's what Xbox should do. They should make a Windows games console that runs with the Xbox store on it and let companies like Asus make, like, hardware and then Xbox just sells software through the game store. And they offer their operating system for free to all these console developers. 
Because that way they can have a much larger sales base. Whilst also not being a monopoly and getting away with it. You know, that'd be a good idea. Do you know what? Microsoft, take my idea, do it. I don't I don't like old or loud sounding cars. I like electric cars. Okay, you are very close to being banned. No, I'm joking. Um To be honest, if you like electric cars, I don't think you like the sound of electric cars. If you, if you enjoy the sound of electric cars, you definitely have a bit of a problem. And I think you might have tinnitus and you've just gotten used to it. Because that's what it sounds like when you're listening to an electric car. It just sounds like someone's tinnitus is playing up. Or your own tinnitus. Tinnitus? Tinnitus? I don't know how you say it, but... Ear ringing. I, I will be honest... No, Kodo, stop eating Doritos. You're going to shit out Chili Heat Wave at this rate. <laughs> um, yeah, if you can't hear electric cars, I, I believe you're going to... By the age of 30, you're going to need a hearing aid then. If you can't hear electric cars. So... I hate to be the guy that's going to break you that news, but be prepared in 10 years time or 20 years time or however long, you're going to need a hearing aid before the age of 40, 100% if you can't hear electric cars. I'm half deaf and I can hear electric cars. So no, it, it doesn't matter about the fact that it's quiet, you can still hear it. The sound of an electric car isn't amazing. Um, the thing is, car cars aren't even that loud. Um, uh, here's the problem with the electric cars are bad for the environment debate. If you try and talk to an electric car enthusiast, they're going to be blindsided and trying to talk to them is just like talking to a brick fucking wall like it's impossible because people think oh electric it, it doesn't make harmful gas and it's like no it, it's pointless conversating with you that's the problem with I will unless you run so here's the problem obviously not factoring in costs or anything like we don't care about like economical impact um, an electric car um, the amount of like environmental impact it takes just to mine the materials to make the batteries and then ship them off to the place that they're gonna make the batteries to then ship them to the other country where the cars are made. The environmental impact is phenomenal. Most of it is from mining out lithium and whatnot. Like, to make the batteries is phenomenal. Because cars and whatnot, they're just made out of copper and metal and plastic and whatnot. That's readily available resources that you can get locally. That's fair enough. If you don't like loud sounding cars, that's fine. But to say that you prefer electric cars because of the sound is wrong. Is a hundred percent. Because if somebody if somebody likes that, you can go and I don't know your your dream job will be in a hair salon or something like that where they've got those or a dentist's office with the drills that really annoying drills. That's your dream job there. If you like the sound of them. <laughs> no, I'm joking. Um, but yeah, ele electric cars, when they're being produced to make the lithium, so much energy goes into that. It's unreal. 
<laughs> fuck nerd out. What's a fuck nerd out? <laughs> It's not even the fact that they're going to explode. Because they are durable, don't get me wrong. But they last about five years before they need replacing. Because the range just drops off. And for an electric car to become equal to a petrol car, in terms of its environmental impact, you have to run it consistently, like, on average, about three years. If you just daily drive it, four years. If you drive it constantly on long road trips, maybe two years. But the, on average, it's about three years before your car becomes less of an impact against the environment than a than a petrol car. But within for five years you're going to replace the car because the batteries are knackered and it's going to cost you too much to replace the battery so then you get an entire new car which resets that cycle yeah it's a, it's a little bit more environmentally friendly compared to a petrol car over the long run but people a lot of people who have electric cars are like I've got an electric car I'm so good for the environment majority of the damage that you've done for the environment was done before you owned your car whereas in a petrol car the damage that you do to the environment is as you own the car as well the electric dodge challenger i'm not that fussed about i think an electric dodge challenger because it looks like a dodge challenger it's just an electric version in my mind that's fine the Ford Mark E, on the other hand, the Mustang Mark E, something that has the Mustang name, if they made the car look like the Mustang, the sports car with an electric motors, I wouldn't care. But it's the fact that they made this dog shit SUV and slapped the Mustang name on it. Like, they, Ford went in and ruined 50 years of heritage that they have with that car over 50 years of heritage with the Mustang brand and the Mustang name and they just shat on it. Like, fair play, fair play. I give Ford Brave Company of the Year award to be able to shit on your heritage so bad to just tarnish the entire brand. Or a sub-brand, but an entire brand. I know electric isn't muscle, but I also realise that electric has to be an option in this current world. Same, same with muscle cars. Understandable that that car is a muscle car, but it's an electric challenger. Like, you know, when you're buying an electric challenger, you have a Dodge Challenger that has an electric motor in it. You're not buying it because of the... It still has the heritage of the Challenger brand. It still has those electric motors that will shred up any tires as we saw it can wheel spin its ass off if it wanted to it's just electric and again I've got nothing against electric cars which is why I've got nothing against that it's still a challenger in looks and I know part of the heritage here's the thing It's very difficult if you've got something that a, a lot of the time we make the association of a Challenger to be the look of a car. Like a Skyline looks like a Skyline because it's a Skyline. It has that signature look to it. We've always grown up with it. The thing is, in my opinion, and obviously some people are very much, I don't know, some people just don't like change, and that's, that's fair enough. But, in my mind, if it, if it stays true to its heritage, which a lot of the time when it comes to a Mustang, is that Mustang body. I love the body of the Mustang. Because when you think about it, the full Mustang hasn't had 
V8 as a requirement for the past 10 years. They've had V6s and even V4s as an option in the Ford Mustang. Nobody complained about that. So, to say that a muscle car is required to have a V8, I, I do think is a little bit wrong. But I, I also see, like, yeah, a big roaring V8 definitely is appealing. <coughs> but when, again, when you look at the Mustang marquee, it doesn't look like a fucking Mustang. Okay, a car is definitely pitted behind me. But I don't know how long the pit lane is. Will I be able to get a pit stop in, in time? Okay, I'm going to push and go as late as I can. I might not make it. I might not make it. Well, yeah, if, if you don't care about cars, then this conversation doesn't really involve you. Because you're not fussed what the car looks like, for example. So... I love the fact that we're so far into this race that rewind doesn't work anymore. It's just... It flashbacks. It just straight up just teleports me back a bit. Come with me to the dance floor. You and me. Ooh, cut. Do you wish you lived in the US? No. To be perfectly honest. I... There are very few countries that I wish I lived in. Uh, one of them would be Australia. And now I've just remembered that Australia has big fuck off spiders and now I don't want to live there. <laughs> no, I, d I don't think there are any places that I'd actually want to live in. Other than the UK. I think the UK is a shithole. But it's my shithole. So, I'll stick with the UK, thank you. <laughs> the, the US is... I, I like the idea of the fact that US is a very... Sweden actually would be a nice place to go to. Um, I've got family in Sweden. And I love the idea of the fact that half of the year it's snowy and half of the year it's sunny. I think it's a beautiful place. And the rallying goes there and that's a beautiful event to watch. Right, I'm going to fucking risk it. I'm risking it for a biscuit. Oh my gosh, the pit lane speed is so high. Oh my god, never mind. I Oh, wait, hang on. Oh my god, I might get away with this. Oh my gosh, the pit lane speed limit is like 50 miles an hour. Holy shit, that's quick. Yeah, Sweden, Sweden maybe would be an option. Why the fuck are you breaking? Stay in the line, stay in the line. Let's be a proper driver, shall we? <laughs> oh, I got away with that. And now I don't have to worry about fuel. Oh, that's brilliant. But yeah, I, I don't think so. I mean, I, I will be 100% honest. I I like the idea of... Um, the one thing that would bug me about America is the tipping e e expectation. So, in the UK... Um, obviously, if somebody buys food, drink, whatever... I know the, the US has gotten into this thing that... Restaurants and whatnot... The waitresses that work there are paid for by people that turn up, which, I mean, in theory, in the UK, it's the same thing. But the difference is that you're 
required to tip. Otherwise, you look like an asshole. Because your tip is supposed to be paying the wages for, you know, whoever has served you. The problem is, that then leads to a lot of... It, it's a really weird thing that the US does. Because in the UK, you tip someone if you think they've done a good job. They're going to get paid no matter what. They're going to get paid their minimum wage or whatever it is that you get paid for working in the UK. But, do you know what? My waitress that served me today, I think she's done a good job. Here you go. Here's a little bit extra. Put it on whatever. I, I know now they take them and they split them up evenly, but... They've done a good job, so here's some extra money to go towards the piggy bank at the end of the month, buy, buy a drink or whatever. Like, that goes to people who give a good service. They get a little bit extra. And that then incentivizes people to work hard, to, to treat people with respect. And... Whereas in America, I've seen a lot of, like, just waitresses that are fed up with their job because they just expect to get paid a tip as part of their wage. And if somebody doesn't tip, it just seems a really backwards thing. Because it's literally the only industry as well where they just don't pay their employees. It's so daft. I think Gordon Ramsay as well, when, when he did like Kitchen Nightmares, was like, this is the dumbest thing in the world. Because it, it's strange. Like every other job you go to in America, you get paid by the employee. Yeah. You live in the US, which part would you live in? That's a good question, actually. Um. I wouldn't live in sort of what's the what's the term for it because you've got like more smaller areas obviously what the fuck is that that Mercedes that's catching up with me that's not good um yeah I wouldn't want to go to a place where I feel like I'd want a city environment still so probably somewhere like either LA, Miami, those kind of more busier places. Because that's what I've grown up with. I've lived in this, this town, city. It's a, it's a very populated area. Places in the middle of nowhere that just aren't. <laughs> Shut up, Cardo. <laughs> Jesus Christ. So, for some reason, right, Kodo has an obsession with my cousin. I've got no clue why he has this obsession. But he will make cousin jokes 24-7 and it gets fucking annoying. So, Miami has hurricanes. Mate, America has things that will fucking kill you. You go around the next corner. There's so Oh, fucking scorpions fucking terrify me. Look at the fucking scary... They've got, like... Stabby... Te they have tails that stab you. No. That's why... But it, even then, Kodo, I've said both to you and Alex to not bring it up anymore because the joke's old and you'll still bring it up. You're beating a dead horse with your dead grandmother's walking stick or something like that. Like, that's how dead the joke is. <laughs> like, at some point, you just gotta learn to shut the fuck up. <laughs> like, some point. And I can tell you that point is today. So, again, no he doesn't. Because I told him this exact conversation last time. And I've also told you this conversation multiple times. So. Again. 
I suggest this is the last time we hear of this. Because the joke is dead. It's annoying now. And I have had enough. <laughs> so... Let, let's finish that there. We'll move on to another subject. We'll leave that one there. We'll not have it anymore. Cool? Comprende? Capisce? Nice. <laughs> Aaron, the joke was in the grave, and it's been dug up many, many times. Well, no, it's not for one more time and one last time, because, again, I've, I've told you what's happening. At that point, if you disobey that, it's a ban. It's as simple as that. There are, there are rules in the chat for a reason. A lot of the time, you can't write down every rule. But, you don't follow the request of the streamer, and you don't follow the rules of the stream. My number one rule is don't be a wet wipe. If you're going to be a dick about something, uh, you're just going to get banned. So, again, it doesn't bother me if you pay money to this channel or not. I'll ban you. Remember, my Twitch, I, I have someone who spent over $1,000 on my Twitch channel. He got banned. So, <laughs> I'm not scared to do it. <laughs> so again, we'll leave it at that. We'll continue the stream. And that'll be the last we'll hear of it. And that'll be the last I will discuss of it. Because the next time, I won't even acknowledge it. I'll just press the button. <laughs> so, cool. I do have have rules. When you first type in the chat, uh, there is channel, channel guys. <laughs> Kodo, I've had authority this whole time. It's my channel. <laughs> What's on your Discord? Uh, I've got a um, couple of chats in there. There's a couple of chats in the Discord. Um, it's not really a lot at the moment, because obviously I stopped streaming for a while, so pretty much everyone there is not as active, but obviously if we get more people in there active again, uh, the exclamation mark Discord won't work, but it is in the description. Uh, the Discord link should be in the description, uh, unless I broke that link, in which case I'll have to find another one. Oh yeah, that's a good shout. I don't even need exclamation mark Discord and whatnot. Because I can just say, check the description. And all the important links are in there. That is a good thing about YouTube over Twitch. Is um, having the content in the description. Uh, I'm 99% sure there is, but if there isn't, I can quite easily make one. I'm also part of a server called Automotive Gaming Community as well, AGC. Um, that is very heavily focused on uh, car photography. Um, if you join my Discord, we can obviously discuss. Because there is a public link, but the website doesn't exist yet. I still haven't got around to making the website for that community, so... I own the URL for it as well. So, it's fun. No color. I literally said what it meant. <laughs> oh. I get I, at this rate, Kodo. To be honest, I'm, I'm this close to banning because your jokes aren't jokes anymore. It's just shit on mech 24-7. At this point, it, it's, it's kind, kind of getting annoying at this point. So... Still can't believe your server did not die. Uh, neither can I, to be honest. Um... Okay. 
whatever, whatever, whatever you say in your very confused brain of yours. Oh, I don't like this. Thing. Whoa! I got one lap left. I need to survive it. No, the mug's overtaken me. Get back here. You bitch. <laughs> okay, so just for context, if you're going to bring up our last conversation, Kodo, you were high off your tits, <laughs> taking the piss out of me, acting stupid, and I'd had enough. And again, this is why I, I brought up this point yesterday. So, you, you, you can bring it into stream if you want, but you ain't going to win. So, again, chill the fuck out. <laughs> no, I didn't stream yesterday. I'm talking about, like, what's that? No, basically, Kodo thinks that it's funny to sit there, right, make up a bunch of shit, act like an idiot, and then you have to baby him. And then when you turn turn around and say, you're being a dick, he's like, oh, sorry, I just had a bit of weed or whatever. And then t you turn around and it's like, well, you're a fucking idiot then. Like, again, I, I don't want to get into it on stream. So, you can either heed my advice, chill the fuck out, act like a normal human, or, or, here's the punchline, get banned. Which one would you like today, sir? Also, this Mercedes is going to overtake me. Drugs are for bozos. 100%. That's why I don't agree with it at all. That's why I don't have them. Because having drugs fucks you up. End of discussion. Drugs are, do not have a positive impact. Or they have, say, two positive impacts and 20 negative ones. But because of the fact that people who have them a lot, it, it, they have a lot more negative impacts. But people who have them are like, oh, look, this is good. Ca caffeine is, yeah, technically. But the difference is I can have caffeine and not be a dick about it when I have caffeine. You can't. <laughs> so, I don't know. Up to you. It's, it's all down to you, good sir. Because I can tell you right now, my fuse is this short. Right now. <laughs> that was good though. Well, good race out of that. So thank you guys so much for watching. If you did enjoy, be sure to leave a like, comment down below and subscribe, and I will see you in the next one. Peace out.